as Odell says to Sports Illustrated, this wasn't no business move. This was personal. They thought they'd send me here to die. Mm. I mean, that's, that's heavy. Mm. That's heavy that he would say something like that. He knows the Giants received better offers for him in this story. Really? Uh, but still chose to send him to Cleveland, and he believes it was out of spite. It's almost like a backhand towards Cleveland, isn't it, in a way from him? Like, does he sound like he's thrilled to be in Cleveland? He actually doesn't. Yeah. They sent me here to die. Like, if you're in Cleveland and you're a big Browns fan, aren't you like, um, so are you unhappy? Like, do you think you're going to just, he's, your he's, career's going to die here now? It's bizarre that he would say that, don't you think? See a river that catches on fire. <laughs> Buy a house for the price of a VCR. See, there's Under construction since 1868. <laughs> such a, that was such a great bit. That was awesome. But what do you make of even that quote? Like, wh like why do we keep... To they, they, could, they, could, they had better offers for me, and they sent me here to die. Like, the whole thing is all... It's so spiteful, all of it. Um, I, I just feel that he has a lot of... I don't know. In a, in, if I'm a Giants fan... In a weird way, I might feel oddly flattered. And, and, like, he obviously really did not want to get traded. He really, he, they, let's be clear. From everything we hear, the front office could not stand him and was doing everything they could to get rid of him. So, are you, do you want to be upset now that he's upset about it? No, he is upset about it. And the fact that he just keeps being upset. I mean... Like, he just, he's not letting it go. Hasn't been that long, to be honest. He should keep talking about it? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking at it as a human. Uh, Would I still be upset about it? Yeah, probably. But, so how long has it been? This show, it's been months. Five months? It's four months? months? Yeah, it's been months. But he keeps talking about it. And he keeps sounding like, they did this to me. Look what they did to me. They think this will break me. And if I'm Cleveland, I'm like, is it really that bad here? It's like he's been there now for a while, and he's basically acknowledging the fact that this, this sucks. He doesn't want to be there. You don't think that's a little bit of a problem? I don't think, I, I actually think those two things are not necessarily mutually exclusive. I think he could be happy that he's on the team now, but still be hurt. By the people get into relationships with new people, care about the new person, and are still hurt by the last relationship. Okay. That happens all the time. Right, but this isn't a relationship. This well, but is, it is. This is an athlete. But it's still a relationship. I understand. But you know I just made a great point. You just take a second. No, it's, it's sit a, with it. It was a good point. It's a fair point. People are hurt by things. Great is strong. If they he's a human being. All right. If they make a trade with the Rams and he's in L.A., is he saying any of this? I think so. Really? I don't. You think he's still bothered or, or is he, I'm in L.A., this is where I wanted to be? Because it's where he wanted to be, as you know. And I, if they worked out a deal and said, well, you know what, we respect you, Odell, we like you, we want you to be happy, we're going to send you where you want to be, it's not best thing for us, and they take a trade, whatever they could do with the Rams. No, I, I think... And he's now in L.A., you think he's still talking about the Giants? Yeah. Hell no. I think people overstate how much he's upset because it's Cleveland. I really do. He's with his best friend. I, I don't think he hates that it's Cleveland. I think he hates that the Giants were desperate to get rid of him. I, I think if he was in L.A., you wouldn't hear a word about the Giants. He'd tell you how much he's happy. He loves in L.A. He'd be living the life. He's in Cleveland, where everything closes by 10. He's got no life right now. None. I, I, he can't jet set. He can't do anything. All he is right now is a social media guy. He's not a guy that can be out and about and do things because there's nothing to do there. And now he's stuck there. In the summer, he could be in L.A. and do whatever he wants. He's working out. He's training. He could stay where he wants to be and be somebody that's on he a red carpet. He was still upset then, too, though. It's fine, but at least he's out and doing stuff. Now it's starting to bother him because he's realizing, I'm stuck here. Can I tell you the truth? You're not going like to It's already fall there, you know. The, the leaves are already off the trees in Cleveland <laughs> right now. <laughs> you're not going to like what I have to say here. You are, and I don't know. Oh, no, oh you're going to, oh, here we go. You're I don't normally get, think of you this way. This is like the New York thing? You no, 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 York not thing? the New York thing. All right. You're being the media guy. 
Well, you're being media guy. Be, how am I being media guy? Media guy creates this narrative of, we know it, he just hates Cleveland. He can't stand being in Cleveland. Oh, I see. We've never heard, we don't know that. So I'm being We've the never reporter who that. needs a story, and I'm turning a quote into my story of the day because I needed a headline. And because everyone's already felt this way. I'm pretty good at it, though, You're right? very good. <laughs> but Michael and Don were obsessed with the same thing. They're like, he hates Cleveland. He doesn't want... I, I frankly think his feelings were hurt by being broken up with by the Giants. Wherever he'd gone... Yeah, he may have more time to talk about it there because it's not as busy a lifestyle off the field. I think his feelings were hurt no matter where he went. And I actually think the Giants were terrible in the handling of Odell. I don't think they handled this well at all. At first, they empowered him too much. Then after empowering him too much, they basically cut off uh, Coughlin at the knees, yeah. got rid of Coughlin. So now you're stuck with Odell, give him a big contract, still don't know how to say to him, they should have found a way to take a player who is that talented and that beloved by his teammates. Here's the part I can't understand. You're incredible on the field and your teammates love you. Anything else is fixable. That's your job. You run an organization. You have an incredible Hall of Fame caliber talent who is loved by his teammates. Even him and Eli, as terrible as what he said was in the interview with Justine Anderson, as bad as he was about Eli, they still never had any friction. We never heard anything that him and Eli... Eli is the, the one quarterback in the league Give me somebody who who ever it. had friction with exactly. Eli. It's not possible. Well, so you luck out because... To have friction, you need to actually uh, ha have something tangible. If his quarterback There's had nothing been... nothing there. 90% of other quarterbacks in the league, once that quote had happened, the relationship would have been severed. Oh, yeah. That's not how Eli operates, Well, look, 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 at, look at Big Ben. A and A-B. And A-B. And a and a exactly. So it happens all the time. Odell happened to luck out that he had Eli Manning. To me, everyone could point fingers at Odell if they want, and he was not perfect. I, I understand that. But for how good he was and how respected he was in the locker room, how loved he was by kids, how much he was supposedly such a charity guy who made kids day all the time. This is someone. Was he? That's what everyone says. Everyone says that. That's what I've heard. Do you remember the story about how he, he blew off the camp, showed up late to another one? I heard that he blew off a dinner or there was something. Also, there was also an event for kids. It might have been sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. He was too busy partying somewhere, showed up See, late, but, but, barely uh, put any effort into it. But again, they're going to they're gonna hear more about that story than the other things that players would tell us sure. about how he was constantly talking to kids. Like, that's the guy that he was. All right, I'll counter what you just said because you're not entirely wrong with what you're saying. Because if I'm running a franchise and I've got this guy and I drafted him. You're figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. He's right. And that's my argument about Chris Dallas Porzingis. And I think those two are similar, in that, not in talent, but similar in the fact that they were young stars that became divas quickly. Yes. And then, it, and then became out of control. Because of the because of how much people love them and their teams weren't. Chris Tapp's probably being worse because he's got the brother as his agent. Yeah, yeah. But still, the point is, is that you still find a way to figure it out. You still find a way to get back control and find out what is it that's the problem and how do we fix this. And Odell's issue is once you saw what happened with Tom Coughlin, you realize that once they made that choice, and it was really Tish behind this whole thing. Mara was never comfortable with any of this stuff. Tish, Tish is more of the guy who's, you know, more, I'd rather be friends with the players and having fun and all that stuff. But I can't imagine you can ever turn back now once a guy like Tom Coughlin, an accomplished person like him, is pushed out. And that means he wins. That means Odell won the power struggle. That's what was going on there, whether they want to discuss it, whether they want to admit it or not. There was a power struggle. Odell won it. The players recognized it. And the next guy you hired was what? A pushover. Yep. The next guy you hired, no one was respected. a lame duck. He showed up in a suit too big with a dopey haircut. Like, and players, can, you could say, what does it matter what he looks like? Ask any athlete. It does matter. If you've ever been in a locker room, it's one of the first things they do. If you walk in and you have a funny look about you, they're all crushing you it's behind a, It's your a back. room full of it's immature just, boys. Exa it's, just the, it's just the culture. And you have to, if you're running a franchise, understand this is just what happens. So if you're going to be that goofy-looking guy, you better have a hell of a personality to where the players say, he looks goofy, but I love this dude. And that's sort of like a Rex Ryan. Rex comes in and he's just... You know, he has this weird look about him. But they heavy, love him. You know, but they love him. Bill Parcells also, when you looked at him, you were like, Jesus, but he's got such a great personality. Worst dresser, run through a worst, wall for worst dresser in the NFL, yeah, Bill see, Belichick. Yeah. He can get away with that. Exactly. But so understand. Ben McAdoo could not. That, especially day one. 
And they already knew him for a year. Think about that. So they gave him the job, and he was a total pushover. And once that happens, that's it. That's it. The student's now running the classroom, and the substitute teacher has no chance. Now you bring in a new regime, especially a guy like Gettleman doesn't take crap from anybody. And you bring him in, and then Shermer is trying to get back control of the team, and you realize for us to regain the culture, we've got to remove two very strong personalities in that locker room that we are never getting on our side. And that's why they did what they did. Is the second one being Landon? Yes. You don't think they could get Landon on their side? I don't believe so. No, I think they feel, I, I almost feel like, why else would they have moved him? They didn't want to pay him? Like, that's why else would they have moved him? He was another strong personality. He was a good dude. So what is the other, what is the reason? Odell, I can explain. I can't explain Landon Collins. So the only thing I can come up with is another guy, because he did emerge towards the end of the season before he was let go as a stronger voice who had a lot to say. And he'd been a strong and voice I before. Kinda, he yes. criticized things before. Right, and I kind of feel like they felt like we've got we've to regain control of our organization. And that's why they went that direction. So for Odell... It's easy for us to look at it from our perspective and say you should have figured it out and make it work, but they probably felt like we've got to start fresh here, and the one way to do it is to remove the power struggle, and that's what they did. But he now, Odell can't understand that. He doesn't know because his whole career, he's been told how great he is. He's never been wrong about anything. And so for the first time, he was told, you know what, you did some things that you might think are great because your teammates love you. But your teammates don't love you because they're inspired by your leadership. They love you because you were fun to be around. That's why they loved him. He was a lot of fun to be around. But, he was a party all the time. But he, and he also, was a personality. But, but he, he was not a guy you would run through a wall for.